Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button or like this video just so that I know for future references whether you guys like this video or not. If you guys don't know me, which probably most of you don't, my name is Tanya and I'll be going into my third year of the Honors Life Sciences program at McMaster. For this video in particular, I know that picking your courses or putting together your timetable on Mosaic, it should be already done, especially for first years. So I decided that I'm going to go through the courses you guys have to take and the courses I already took in first year and just rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being more difficult and 1 being more relatively easier. And to be quite frankly honest, I just want to go through all the courses I took in first year and the potential courses you guys will be taking in first year as well and just give my honest opinion on the course and give um, overall feedback and just comment on it in general. I feel the urge to say this regarding any video about school because I just need to, but the experiences I had with certain courses is only a representation of my experience. And just because I find a course extremely difficult does not mean you will find it difficult and vice versa. Just because I found a course easy does not mean that the course will be easy for you. Also, I just can't help but notice the Riverdale poster in the back grade nine me was obsessed but not anymore but it's still up because i spent money on this poster and it's gonna stay up but just ignore it anyways i think it's only right i start off this video with just listing the typical first year courses um you'll see students taking a first year so typical meaning that you do not need to take all the courses i list down here but you would be seeing a typical first year student taking these courses so i have it on my phone here but i will pop it up here we have biology 1 ao3 biology 1 mo3 math 1 ls3 physics 1 ao3 chem 1 ao3 chem 1 aa3 and typical because i'm gonna list these two courses you do not need to take it but again a typical first year student is um, seen to be taking these courses so psych 1 xo3 envir sci 1 co3 you have six units of electives as well starting off with one of my personal favorites math 1 ls3 so i believe in order to apply to the mcmaster life sciences program the gateway program you either need to take an advanced functions or a calculus or you might enjoy math like me and just take both. I did end up taking both in high school. And then when you come into first year of the life sciences program, you can pick between taking Math 1 LS3 or Math 1 AO3. Um, math 1 LS3 is Calculus for Life Sciences 1. And honestly, I truly feel like it is just a repetition of the material covered in high school with a couple of new little concepts sprinkled on top. Here I was taking this course, we had three term tests and then four Python labs. I know the word Python sounds intimidating, but you have a lot of assistance from your TAs and your peers as well. Make sure to utilize that correctly and to the best of your ability because it is a tremendous amount of help. And then, um, like most courses in first year, you have a final exam. Unfortunately, I can't really add too much about Math 1A03. Unfortunate for those of you watching who do want some commentary about Math 1A03, but fortunate for me because I saved myself from a lifetime of trauma and I will consider that a win because never will you catch me taking Math 1A03, ever. But I'll try my best to help you guys out from the comments I've heard from other people. Definitely take Math 1A03 only and if only you are interested in taking upper level math courses. If you are not planning on doing so, stay away from Math 1A03. And this is speaking straight to the people who did not take calculus in high school. Don't be afraid. Don't think that the chance of getting a 12 in Math 1 LS3 is way slimmer because you didn't take calculus in high school. Sure, it would have prepared you better for the course, but it honestly doesn't take away the possibility of you getting a 12. I know a lot of you are looking to apply to med school in the future as well, and 
Truly speaking, they do not care which calculus you take to fulfill their requirements. So honestly, stick to taking Math 1 LS3 because you do have a better chance, a way better chance of getting a 12 in Math 1 LS3 than you do in Math 1 AO3. And honestly, for med school, your GPA is very important. So taking it, you have a better chance of getting an A plus or a 12 and ultimately boosting your GPA in the end. Math 1 LS3, great course. If you didn't take calculus in high school, Math 1 LS3 is your course. Run as far as possible from Math 1 AO3. Bearing in mind the things I did say about the course, I will give this course a 3 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. The next course I'll be talking about is Chem 1 AO3. Oftentimes I find that you get people who really like chem or they hate it there just is no in between so if you guys don't like chem um so chem 1 ao3 is one of the mandatory courses you need to take in first year but honestly it wasn't too bad as long as you kept up with the high school content all the material you learned from high school it will reappear in first year and having a stronger foundation of the high school concepts you learned will make the course so much more easier in first year. That being said, I will give the course a 5 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. And just before I dive deeper into the logistics of the course, I do want to give you guys a little bit of a course breakdown. Put it up here. So honestly, I'll start off with what I really liked about this course and it's the quizzes. Take advantage of the quizzes because they're put into place to help boost your grade. The way the quizzes are designed, it's just a blessing in disguise. So in regards to the quizzes, you have suggested deadlines every two weeks or every week, I'm not too sure, it's been a long time, uh, where they suggest that you do submit the quizzes, but then you have a final deadline at the end of the semester where you should um, submit all your quizzes by. Honestly, I'm not sure if that was the best explanation I could have given, but you will not be penalized for not submitting the quizzes by the suggested deadline. Please learn from my mistakes. It is not the best idea to submit these quizzes all towards the final deadline because it just becomes a lot. I find that first year is a lot about taking learning into your own hands. I know in high school you get held by the hand. If you don't submit something, they're like, girl, where is it at? But in university, they don't care. You don't submit something, that's your problem. So take it from me. If I could go back in time, I would submit those quizzes by the suggested deadline. It's doing yourself a favor as well. The quiz material does correspond with what's being taught in lecture. So it's in your best interest to learn the material in class and then come home and or whenever you have time uh, to quiz yourself using the quizzes. And this will be a good representation of whether you understand the content being taught in class or whether you need a little more assistance in tackling these concepts. If you guys are not understanding a concept being taught in lecture, please, please, please take advantage of office hours provided per by uh, professors. They usually set aside an hour a week, sometimes two, where they go over concepts in class that were discussed in greater detail or they take up uh, questions that students have. and chances are if you don't understand something in lecture there is another student in there who doesn't understand what's being taught so don't be afraid to ask for help moving back to the quizzes um in my year the quizzes were worth 15 percent of your final mark that is a big portion of your grade it may not seem like it but 15 percent can make up a great portion of your final mark. In my year, I actually had two attempts for each quiz where the highest mark of each attempt was considered for your final grade. And then just to quickly wrap it up, uh, for tests and exams, it was all multiple choice. If you are good at multiple choice, it's your time to shine. The only downfall is that you do not receive part marks on the test or exam. I do have the marking scheme right in front of me. I'll also put it up here. The quizzes are 15%, um, the labs are 15%, the term test, so you have two term tests, 
each being 20%. The final exam is 30%, making up your final grade to be out of 100. What I absolutely love about courses in first year is that you have multiple marking schemes. If you do not perform as well as you expected on a test, that test can always be dropped and the weight of your test can be added to your final exam. It's important not to be hard on yourself in first year, especially first year, because the professors know it's your first year in university. They have implemented a number of ways for you to succeed in their courses. And a primary example of this is the multiple marking schemes they put into place for you. Well, the next course is Chem 1 AA3. And you do take it the winter semester following Chem 1 AO3. Yes, I know a whole year of Chem is brutally painful. Been there, I know it's painful. But honestly, if you guys put your mind to it and you guys keep up with the content, it's not half as bad as you would expect it to be. I will admit this course was a little harder than Chem 1 AO3 only because you are learning a lot of new content compared to Chem 1 AO3. Now that being said, um, it isn't impossible to get a 10 or higher in the course or even a 12 for that matter, but you need to put in the time and effort to see those results just like many of the courses in first year. I will give this course a 7 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. I loved, loved, loved the professors. I feel like that was the upside to this course and they are usually the same as Chem 1 AO3. I just want to briefly comment on the testing style for this course. The testing exams are uh, mostly multiple choice but they do have some fill in the blanks and multi-select options as well and in terms of the quizzes unfortunately this time around um they do not have suggested deadlines for this course and they have a firm deadline for each quiz that you need to be attentive of and submit your quizzes by and another thing unfortunately is that they do not have two attempts for the quizzes anymore uh, so what they do do is, what they do do, <laughs> well, what they do is they give you two attempts, but it's not really two attempts. Your first attempt, you see all the questions and the questions you get incorrect will reappear on your second attempt. So for your second attempt, you're basically only answering the questions you got wrong in your first attempt. And then they take the average of both attempts and that's the grade you get for your quiz. You also get introduced to organic chemistry during the end of Chem 1A3. I think it's very beneficial for those interested in pursuing medicine, dentistry, just post-grad uh, to really soak in organic chemistry because it, like I said, it'll be very beneficial for those taking organic chemistry in second year. For the lab component of Chem 1A3, you are required to submit a pre-lab assignment typically involving a flow chart which was fairly easy and it's worth 0.5% as well as submitting a post-lab report and that was worth 2% and then you do a pre-lab quiz which is worth 0.5%. That makes each lab worth 3%. And you have five labs in the semester, so it'll be worth 15% of your grade. I personally remember the chem labs feeling super stressful. It just hits you all at once. So I would highly, highly recommend you watch the videos they provide to you before um, you go into the lab and thoroughly read through the lab manual. And it'll help you complete the lab with uh, ease at overall. The labs being stressful in itself already it really doesn't benefit you in any way going to the labs unprepared ultimately what it does is just compile to your stress so trust me you don't want it avoid it and just watch the lab videos beforehand and read the lab manual again i'll put the breakdown up here but just quickly going through it eye clicking polling is two percent avenue quizzes 15 percent labs 15 percent you have two term tests each worth 20 percent and then you have a final exam worth 28 percent i think this is the last course i'm going to cover in this video because it is longer than I expected to be and I don't want to be editing forever. So if you guys did like this video or I did help you in any way, please be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe so I can put out more videos like this. The last course, I'll be talking about Physics 1AO3. Um, 
physics. It can seem daunting at first, especially if you didn't take it in high school. I didn't take any physics in grade 11 or 12, but a lot of my peers did. I understand the aspect of feeling behind when all your other peers know physics. If this makes you guys feel any better, I did end up doing really well in physics, having no prior knowledge of physics coming into first year. Don't let this discourage you if you didn't take physics in high school. But hearing from friends who did take physics in high school, they did inform me that a lot of the content learned in high school was what was covered in first year physics. If you did take physics in high school, you do have the upper hand for sure. I think the way the course is delivered makes it extremely difficult to keep up with the content being taught. I believe till this day, um, physics is still being offered online. It's just an online course, but all the lectures and content are delivered online. So going to cl class online, I started to realize that the lectures were very, very fast paced and we covered new content like literally every week. I found that the questions covered in class were way easier than the long kappa questions provided for our own practice the long kappa questions do count towards your final grade because of this i would find myself using my own time to be kind of learning concepts on my own and through the use of videos i found on youtube taking extra time than needed you do get one online video module per week with two lectures and those usually have eye clicker questions attached to it my favorite was the online long kappa assignments that i was talking about where you answer questions for the content that you essentially covered in class and you have three or four I think four tries for each question it gives you an opportunity to make mistakes uh, to enhance your learning. And in my year, we had five laboratory assignments, which was hybrid. So you could choose to go in person or um, do it online and complete it on your own at home. You guys see me looking down. I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything in the video. So my apologies. For the labs, it honestly wasn't difficult at all to do well on. You just have to answer what they ask you and you will get full marks. I'm not sure if it's the same yet, but in my year, we had two midterm tests, which were online. And then in my year, the exam was online as well. But now that COVID is declared over, I believe that they moved the final exam to being in person. I honestly really love this course. The professors really, really, really cared about their students and really showed as well. And they provided different grading options like many other courses. So if you bomb one midterm, it's not the end all be all. To be honest, I did bomb the second midterm like terribly. I ended up getting like a 50 and I redeemed myself during the final exam. So. Please take advantage of the different grading schemes and don't be too hard on yourself if you don't do as well as you expected. All right, so that's gonna be the end of today's video. I covered the, I believe, four courses that you do need to take and I added a lot of commentary about the courses in depth as well. I really do hope that you find this video useful. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. And please let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions as well, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'll probably be dropping a part two to this video in a couple days, I hope, hopefully if I don't get too busy. If you were looking forward to hearing about a specific course and I didn't get to I didn't get to it in this video, um, I will definitely get to it in my next video. Thank you.